All right, what exactly is your beef first, with uh, Mr. Port Horitz? Ah, you said Howard Zinn's book. Let's read this book. All right, I'll keep it. Uh huh. Have you ever heard of Howard Zinn? Yeah, I've heard of Howard Zinn. Have you read any of his literature? Uh, I've, I've flipped through that. I've seen him speak on TV. No, I'm not very familiar with the his arguments. If you don't mind, I don't see. Okay. But what exactly is your uh, problem with Mr. Port Horitz? These are the same people that brought you the Iraqi war. Uh huh. That said the weapons of mass destruction in the world. Mm -hmm. That used coal and power to lie at the UN. Mm -hmm. That even even the right wingers have to admit they lied. Mm -hmm. So if they've been lying since 1492, like the Bible says. Like the Bible says? This is my Bible. Oh, okay. Ah, so yes. They got their Bible that they don't question. This is my Bible. What okay? is uh, Mr. Port Horitz religious? I thought he wasn't. Uh... No, I'm making a metaphor. So oh, okay. All right. Well, when's the last time someone questioned anything the government said? Oh, I think it happens quite often. <laughs> that's uh, that's really. the American way, it well, seems. It's not the American way is to get along to go along and just do what the media says. Hmm. Do you think Vietnam could happen if they told the truth, no? <laughs> well, what could happen if they told the truth, no? You have to be creating the same lie after lie, and you have to try and make it stretch to keep the generation stupid. So your argument, uh, your problem with Mr. Portholtz is that he's connected with people who you feel are liars. My problem with him is a million things, not just one thing. All right. It's not just one thing. All right, let me put it like, you why are read. you protesting this particular book reading? Someone told me he was going to be here, and he's one of these, these neocons that brought you the Iraqi war. Can I ask what your definition of neocon is? Because I, I hear that thrown around a lot. You don't know what a neocon is? No, I mean, I have an idea. I'm just curious what, what your definition your of a neocon is. As, as I understand it, it originally started out as a slur to refer to people who are uh, uh, adopting conservative values, but who, as per people in the conservative movement, aren't traditionally conservative. And, and, and in many respects, it's a slur for uh, Jewish, i.e. Jews aren't supposed to be conservative, no. and now they are. That's what I, as I understood it. Well, so what is your definition of a neocon? That's like the people who say, if you're against aid to Israel and the state of Israel, Mm -hmm. Not the people of Israel, not the peace and exchange. Oh, no, I'm not talking about the left wing. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, okay. fair enough. <laughs> they want to run and say you're anti-Jewish. Uh huh. Oh, well, right. that's not what I'm saying. No, but that, that's the same mentality of. A fair enough. A neocon. All right. Is somebody who's not truly conservative. Is someone who is beyond conservative. But is someone who believes totally, hundred percent, in manifest destiny mm -hmm. that. There should be one corporation and one government running everything. That uh, there shouldn't be any competition. Mm -hmm. and everything should be bought and paid for by one corporation. Interesting. That if a corporation says something, that has to be right. Uh huh. And a lot of the true conservatives do not want their rights taken away. They do not want people crying in their bedrooms. Mm -hmm. They do not want cameras on public streets. They don't want people telling them what to do with their private life. Mm. Neocons are not, they're a hybrid of conservatives that are like 10 times worse. All right, so. They're an offspring of that. It's like there are conservatives and there are, there are Nazis. There are some conservatives like, you know the guy in the, the Republican that's running for president, Ron Paul? Yes. He's definitely a conservative. He's definitely not a communist. He's definitely not a socialist. Mm -hmm. But he is against the war. He is against uh, the Patriot Act. He is against the IRS because the IRS is a private corporation. He doesn't believe guns should be taken away from people. Even though I think, you know, guns are useless because uh, people are generally homicidal with guns. Mm -hmm. So you can't say he's a radical, Ron Paul. All right. Pro life. The role the United States has that Afghanistan and Iraq are not wars in their own right, but fronts or theaters in the larger struggle. And that, like the Cold War, which in retrospect can now be seen more clearly as World War III, this new war, World War IV, will in all probability go on for some three or four decades. For today, in the monster with two heads, one religious and the other secular, that is accordingly best described as Islamo-fascism, and in the states breeding, sheltering, and financing its terrorist armory, 
We are, for the third time in some 60 years, up against an aggressive and murderous totalitarian challenge to the liberal democratic order of which we were and still are the leading part. The first of these challenges, of course, came at us from the right in the form of Nazism and its fascist allies. And we took it on and defeated it in World War II. The second came from the left in the form of communism as embodied most dangerously in the Soviet Empire. And that one we took on and defeated in World War III. I, I lived I, I live on the Upper West Side for nearly 25 years, and I begin to I begin I begin to remember why I decided to leave. My family. Murderer. You're a murderer. 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 Murderer.